so you haven't shot video in a while. In a while. Did last like more like TV stuff, you know? I don't mess with video so often. Oh, more like the, sorry, you're so the big, big. The big screen. So big and bad. Big well, welcome back. We're doing Pork Marbella today, which is Adam's inspiration. But your execution. And my execution. It was a collab, so we're both going to host this video. The original recipe is chicken Marbella. Right. So if you grew a up classic. in like the 80s, you know that from the Silver Palette Cookbook. At some point, I went to my friend Ted Lee's house, and he was doing like a pork loin recipe in Madeira. I went home, and I was like, oh, that. what if you did like the same thing, but with the Marbella marinade, which is some red wine, some oil, some prunes, some that stuff, brown sugar. And I tried it, and I was like, oh my god, this is like the best thing ever. So what I needed you to do was like take this concept of chicken Marbella and turn it into an actual pork Marbella recipes with like numbers and instructions and all that stuff. Got right? it. And yeah. that's what we did. I'm just a field guy. So yeah. or can we start? Let's start. All right, let's do this. All right. So right now I'm going to season the pork tenderloins with some kosher salt. Although I don't, just, I don't entirely know why I'm doing this. Okay. I can explain to you why we're doing it. And that is because we want the salt to have a chance to actually go into the meat instead of just resting on the surface. If I were to put this in the bag right now with the marinade, all of the salt would dissolve into the marinade and we wouldn't have a seasoned piece of pork. We're gonna let this rest for 15 minutes, yeah. correct? And as we're letting it rest, we're gonna make the marinade. We were gonna make the marinade in a bowl, and then Ma's like, well, why don't we just do it in the bag, in a bowl, because you're gonna put the pork in the bag, so why use more why things Why mess up another bowl? All right, first of all, all right, so we got oil, and, essentially it's oil and vinegar. So we have those things here. It's oil, vinegar, sugar, and then some other yeah. seasoning. So it's basically an agrodolce is what we're making, which is why... I was going to say a salad dressing, but if you want to say agridolce, fancy word. We're making pork in salad dressing. We're going to take about four garlic cloves, just do that smash thing. Meanwhile, I'm just going to tear these prunes into smaller pieces because it's kind of a mouthful to get an entire prune in a bite. So this way we'll disperse some of the sweetness throughout the dish. So we got the garlic going, smashed. Again, you don't need to these mince this finely, I don't think, because it's going in a marinade, and as long as the garlic imbues the marinade with flavor. Releasing the Allison, if you will. Um, and it's gonna that get- That sounds like a band from the 90s or something. It sounds like something Brad would say. Yeah, red wine vinegar, olive oil, basic white wine. Yeah, nothing just a too dry sweet. white wine. Yeah. There's a lot of sweet ingredients in here, so you wanna go something dry with the you wine. You got your Pinot Gris, your Sauv Blanc, whatever yeah, you're whatever. sitting there drinking. This is one cup of Spanish olives, green olives. Pitted. Pitted. You could chop those up or tear them up if you wanted. Yeah, should you know, we? It's kind of well, it's, oh, it's already in there. It's too late. Okay. Uh, capers because they're salty? Is that why? Yeah, and a little bit of the caper brine. So there's a tablespoon oh, yes. of caper brine, which is going to help season the marinade so that if any of that salt does end up falling off into the marinade, at least there's some seasoning happening within it. Basic dried oregano. Basic. Which, if you, again, if you grew up in the 80s, you always had a jar of dried oregano in the house that your mom would use on like four nights a week for, for dinner. Ooh, it's really uh, not my cup of tea. Not but in your bag. Now everyone has the fresh herbs. It's so nostalgic in this dish. I feel uh, like it has to stay. I call, can I say bullshit? No, I can't say BS. I, I kind of call, call BS you on. You can say I can bullshit. say bullshit. All right, I call bullshit on bay leaves. Bullshit? I feel like you've never tasted a bay leaf. If you, if you, on made, its own. If you made this without the bay leaf, you would never know. Third cup brown sugar? Yeah. So we're just gonna break that up. Pork. We used to always have chicken Marbella for Passover. Yeah. My mom would make it every Passover, hands down. She'd bring out the thing, put it on the buffet. But you're probably not gonna serve pork Marbella at Passover. Oh, true Because it's not kosher. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, scratch that. All right, so you're gonna seal it up, press all the air out so that yeah. they really do sort of mingle together. And then we kind of put that over there. And two hours or overnight, right, in the fridge. Yeah. As fridge. long as you have, just give it at least two hours to do its magic. I'm gonna go put this in the fridge over here. Okay, so it's been two hours. You wanna pass them to me and I'll blot them? Yeah, I would love to do that. That'd be awesome. Great, um, I'll do the messy stuff. Then, key move right here, we are going to reserve the marinade because, because this is what becomes the cooking liquid that the pork sort of hangs out in. Um, the reason that we're blotting it dry, the surface area moisture inhibits the browning, so we're gonna wick any of that away so that we can immediately start browning it in the pan, which is what we're gonna do right now. All right. So you can do the searing, because I'm not wearing an apron. Just when it starts to get hot enough, that's when we'll add both of these at the same time. All right, I just saw my first smoke. All right, so you wanna I do this? I feel like you need a side towel. I know. 
You know? Can we talk I don't about want the you white dress shirt? I forgot we were doing a video today and I had to put a dress shirt on and a suit for a meeting thing. And then I was like, oh, we've got this video. You didn't want to wear a halter apron in case you no, splatter? No, that's like a Chris Morocco look. I can't rock the, the full apron. No All right, shade. there we go, smoking. Smoking, in we go. Do you hear that sizzle? That's good, obviously. Question, Molly. Yeah. Do you think this is a smidge too high because of all the smoke, or is that all right? Um, I feel okay about it, but okay. you should trust your instincts. This is your recipe. It's my idea, your recipe. All right, so that's nicely brown. Yum, it smells good. It smells amazing. We got some good color on the second side, so I'm gonna flip it up on this end and get some browning on that third part. Okay, look. That's looking good. That's looking real good. Okay. We're good? I think we're good. I think we're good. So we're good. what you do now, you take it off the heat for just like a minute so that when you pour in the marinade, it, it doesn't all immediately evaporate, right? Yeah. You don't want it to boil down too much. And it's nice to get it on top of the pork yeah. also, so it's all up in there. Oh, yeah. All right. Give Gorgeous. Give it a little shake. And then into the oven. Into the oven with the hand towel. Comme ça. And just put it right in there like that. 22 to 26 minutes, I read in the recipe. That's right. And we're going to check the internal temperature. And it will continue to cook a little bit after it comes out of the oven. So that's why we pull it then. Residual heat. We're going to make a coffee? Yeah, let's go make coffee. We're going to make coffee now. Do I need coffee? Yeah. No. Yeah. Actually, no? Okay. I forbid you from drinking coffee. Ooh. All right, so taking the jus and just sort of yeah, giving it a little bath. We want to keep it nice and moist, so it's good to spoon some of those juices over halfway through cooking. The best way to baste is to tilt the pan towards you so that the juices collect towards you and then you can spoon away. So you'd go like this and then you can just easily. Oh, that's like what they do in the videos when they do it like in slow motion and the it's frothing. What, it's the yeah. frothing butter. It's yeah. what the pros do. That, I, I learned something, gonna do that. Why don't we get a temp just to see okay. where we're at. And this is like the thickest part here is at 120 and this is the smaller tenderloin. So that's not gonna take that much longer to reach 145. And this guy is at 117, so a little bit okay. behind. So back in. Let's chop our parsley in the meantime. Okay. That uh, is a rough chop. A rough chop, so not like an Andy Barragani fine micro mince. I don't think Andy would micro mince parsley. No, but he micro minces everything else and he lets you know he that would he micro mince. And that, first of all, that's not even a thing, micro mincing. It is, yes, <laughs> we've used it in the magazine. Um, what? I've used it once, like last month. That's good, right? Back in the 80s, my mom would still buy the curly parsley. Like oh, yeah. now, I actually no love one. curly parsley. No one buys it. It's fun to eat. Yeah. Uh, but I feel I could, like we should bring it back. You can bring it back. You have the power. Ooh, it's looking real nice. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna do a couple more spoons, and then let's check the temp. 146. Perfect. Don't, don't don't touch the handle. I'm not going to. This is not my first rodeo. Okay, this one's at 142. We're gonna call it. Here we go. This sauce is amazing. The smell is like it's sweet, it's acidic, it's you got the fragrance, you got the oregano, all that stuff. But you were like, oh, we should get all like professional chefy. We should reduce the sauce a bit to get it all glazy, right? Yeah, there's something nice about mounting a little bit of butter, which means emulsifying a little bit of cold butter into something that's this liquidy to give it a little bit more body so that it can really nap the pork. And this you want a pretty medium high heat, right? Yeah. So you want to get looking, a boil going. So once this comes to a simmer, Adam's going to throw the butter in and then we'll just swirl and stir until it's a little bit thicker. Yeah, go. We're simmering. Cold butter because it makes it easier to emulsify with the hot liquid. Yeah, and this smells so good. Right. What are you looking at now? How do you know when it's reduced enough. Right about here, where I put a streak through the pan and it stays for a moment and then it goes away and it's not sticking and staying in its place, but you can tell that it has some body. So this is like a good place to stop. It's so good. It doesn't even need salt for maybe the first time in my life. Ooh. The balance of flavors is so right on. Between I mean, we like nailed it. Salty, did you just say that? 
Go bleep it out. All right. Well, I think what's also neat about pork tenderloin is that there's gonna be parts that are a little bit more done and parts that are a little bit more rosy. Something for everyone. Something for everybody, which is nice. You can see a little bit of pink, just rosy in the center there, but not under. It's really beautifully cooked. And that's because we went really high heat on the stove and then we went really low in the oven and let it cook very gently and evenly through. Sort of, we'll do a little circular situation. I'm gonna rearrange this. You rearrange this, okay. I feel like the circular thing is kind of know. passe, so we're gonna do okay. more of like a scattered vibe. Scattered, more rustic. I'm kind of more like 1992 guy, yeah, you know? Yeah, that's been made clear. <laughs> all right. Look at that, look at that, all in one. So I'm gonna let you make that rustic. It's really beautifully cooked, look at that. Perfect. Okay, so then spooning all of this delicious sauce all over. And oh, what I love about this. We didn't stir in the parsley. Want, oh, you stir in the parsley. Well, that's the other thing we talked about when we did the recipe the first time. Do you like the parsley on top after it's sauced or do you like it? You like it mixed in because like it's still it fresh in. and green. Yeah. But it's a little bit incorporated. Yeah, and then you don't just have like a big splat of, of parsley, parsley on the top. Yeah, that's not looking great. Yeah, and, there, and every bite's a little bit different because yeah. there's like a briny bite and then a sweet bite and then you got your pork and it's a pretty dynamic eating experience, mm. if you will. That looks maybe better than the first time we did it. Really? I feel really? like. All right, I'm gonna let you plate these because you're the professional. All right. And then we can share the rest with the test kitchen. That's gorgeous. Tell me all your thoughts. I'm gonna do a little bit of the pruney sort of thing. Sweet. First bite, little prune. I'm gonna go mm. olive. It really is so good. Mm -hmm. It's, I, I know we overuse the word tender, but this is like the definition of tender. This is maybe the only way that I want to eat pork tenderloin. I love this with some soft polenta we talked about. You can make some instant soft polenta with a little milk and butter in there, spoon the it on there. The chef recommends. The chef recommends. And you do little <laughs> medallions on the soft polenta. You told me that was 290s also. Yeah. Maybe we just find a more rustic way of doing that. Uh, but it's a great compliment. I um, think just the word medallion, if we could just cut that out of the oh vocabulary, that's what's feeling really 90s. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mashed potatoes would be really nice. Pureed potatoes. Mmm. Mm. Oh. Anyway, so this is good. freaking delicious. Um, Chris, Chris Ryan, Ryan, you're ready to go. All right. Do you guys want your you own plate? You want your own plate? Do you want me to cut you a piece? Can I just, can I? Yeah, just there? right off the platter. Oh, you get your own fork. There. Wow, we're really messy right now. Yeah, it's really good. Just try it. Trust me. Mm. You can smell the vinegar from back there. I have another it's visitor like, too. It's that like beautiful moment where there's like so much brightness, <laughs> right. but there's enough sweetness to balance it. It's, it's good. It's so good. Have we, like here's yeah. a fork. I've only eaten a prune in, in Marbella. Yeah. Uh, who, I don't approve of this olive. Uh, well, we, well, we were gonna. A nice olive that was pitted and torn. Right? I know, we I don't know why we did that. We're gonna it. change the recipe. We're gonna tear yeah, the olives. But also who called for a pitted yeah. olive? Uh, the time. silver palette. Oh, I, I, oh, really? I have a meeting with Anna oh, Wintour. Good luck I with Anna. Go oh, Sorry, okay. guys, I got to run. Thank you. Don't Thanks. worry, I'll just clean all this up. <laughs> you got it. Thank you very much. Great. It's good, right? Mm -hmm. Like you hate to say it because it's Rappo's recipe, but it's really good. Mm -hmm. Rappo had a vision, obviously. He came down to my station, demanded that we develop a pork marbella recipe together. You got to say yes to the boss, so that's what we did. We made a lot of adjustments, um, and I think it really improved the dish. It also comes together a lot more quickly than chicken marbella, so this is super weeknight friendly. And I'm pretty happy with it, to be honest. Except for the mess. He left me with a mess. Rude. For more. I think that's a wrap, right? Tommy? <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, I'm gonna, can I? <laughs> Tommy. <laughs>